Shalom. Welcome back to another lesson. My name is Yakal. First and foremost, before I start, I want to give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High, Abba Nawa Yahweh, Bahashem HaMashiach, Malak Today we're talking about women, teachers, pastors, deacons, bishops, leaders, whatever you want to call them. Is that found within the scriptures? Can a woman be a teacher or a pastor? The simple answer is no. We'll prove that with the Bible. But I just wanted to start with that. The conversation that we're having today has nothing to do with can a woman be a team leader, a manager, a CEO, director, MD, run her own company. That is not the conversation. The conversation that we're having right now is biblical. So in a church setting, is that allowed? So get your pens, pencils, notebooks. We're going to dive into this. It's going to be a little bit of a deep dive. Because I want to show you all the errors of this doctrine. This doctrine is so flawed, you actually have to add things into the scriptures to make it say something that the Bible is not saying. So let's start the conversation. When we have this conversation with people, I'll start there. When we say women cannot teach, they say, but listen bro, the Bible actually have women prophets. Which is correct, the Bible does, I'm not going to argue with that. Joel 2.28 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Nobody has an issue with women prophesying. Peter talks about the same thing in Acts chapter 2 verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I'm not against the prophecy. So prophesy, the word prophesy is broken down into two parts. Pro and fasai. So pro just means before. Fasai means to speak. Meaning to speak before. There is a prophet. A prophet is not somebody that teaches you and then is a preacher and whatever. There is not a prophet. There is something else. So now I've shown you that we definitely agree that people can be prophets, male and female. So let's go to all the scriptures that they go to to prove their point that women can teach. I'm reading it. You must see or tell me if a woman, if these women, these women, are they busy preaching or what are they doing? Let's read. And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Verse 21. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to Yahweh, for he had triumphant or triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. So Miriam starts singing. We don't see Miriam preaching. The preaching part or the teaching part was Moses. Aaron had the function of the priests. We don't see Miriam teaching. She was simply singing. I'm showing you the scriptures they go to. So please don't kill me. Just showing you what they are showing us. Judges 4 and 4. Let us see if the, if the Bora started teaching. It says in the Bora, a prophetess. The wife of Lebedoth, she judged Israel at that time. It says, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. So now the people are saying, can you see she was even judging the people, forgetting that they are reading the book of Judges. They were judging people in the book of Judges. So Leviticus 19 and 15 says the following. It says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So what is the book of Leviticus telling us? Don't judge somebody because of what they look like, but judge them according to, thus saith the most high. So the book of John chapter 7 and 24 says the same thing. 
judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Don't treat somebody different that's poor from somebody that's rich. Let's go back to the book of Judges. So she was judging the people, remember? So I'll pick it up at verse 6. It says, And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of, uh, sorry, out of Kadesh Neftali, and said unto him, Had not Yahweh spoke, sorry, had not Yahweh the God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw towards Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men from the children of Neftali and of the children of Zebulon? So she's asking a question. Didn't the Most High, Barak, listen, didn't the Most High say, You must go to the Mount Tabor? And take with you 10,000 men from these two um, tribes. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera. So this is still the conversation that she's having with Barak. It says, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude. And I will deliver him into thine hand. So Barak, didn't the Most High say this is what you must do because I'm going to deliver the captain of um, Jabin's army into your hand? Wasn't that the conversation? Did she start teaching him? Did she start preaching to him? I don't know. You decide. So 2 Kings 22, and I'll start at verse 13. I'm sure, again, I'm showing you all the places they go to, right? So 2 Kings 22, 13 says, Go ye inquire of Yahweh for me and for the people, and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. They found the book of the law. They started reading. They wanted to inquire. It says, For great is the wrath of Yahweh that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all which is written concerning us. The king found this book. He then have questions. What is happening? We have not been keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. We've been, we've been disobedient. Right? So now, if we pick it up, because they go to Hilda in verse 14. Verse 15 says, And she said unto them, Thus saith Yahweh, the God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me. The man that sending is Hilka, the priest. Right? It says here, Thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of this book, which the king of Judah did read. So this lady is a prophetess. This is the book of Second Kings, right? Let me show you something quickly. So Second Kings, we see, we find here. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and 8. Listen to what Jeremiah is saying. He's saying, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms. Judah was a great kingdom of war and of evil and of pestilence. This is exactly what this lady is doing. Exactly. Nothing different. She's telling them that Trouble is coming. Remember prophecy meaning just to speak before. Then it says, verse 17, Because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, they, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, meaning their idols. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. So Hilda just warned them of what's coming. People use the argument that Hilda started opening the Bible and started reading the Bible. Let's see if that's the case. It says here in verse chapter 23, And the king sent, and they gathered all um, unto him, sorry, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of Yahweh, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people both small and great and he read who's this the king and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant 
which was found in the house of Yahweh. So now I've shown you the, the um, Maryam, Deborah, and Hilda. Let me jump quickly to the New Testament, right? So John chapter 20 and verse 17. They use this to say that this lady was the first person or first female preacher because she gave the good news. Let's see if that's what's happening here. John chapter 20 verse 17 says, And Yahushai said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go and tell my brethren. Does it say go and preach to my brethren? It says go and tell my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Let's see what she did. It says Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. Did she preach to them? No. It's like, as she went and said, you know what, gentlemen? I have just seen Yahweh. He, sorry, Yahweh Shai. He is risen. And he actually spoke to me. And he said to me, I must come and tell you guys the same thing. So it says, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. And she went and um, that she had seen Yahweh Shai. I'm so sorry. And that he had spoken these things unto her. That's all that happened there. Nothing else. No preaching. Now, let me show you something quickly. This is the other place where they go to. To justify woman teaching. This is the worst place that you can ever come to. This is Numbers chapter 12 and verse 1. Right? It says, And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Had Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not also spoken by us? Doesn't that sound familiar? The word can, the, the most I can also deal with women. Is that not the same thing they're saying today? It says here, And Yahweh heard it. So here comes trouble, because now Yahweh hears this. It says, I'll jump to verse 4. It says, And Yahweh spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam. Come out, you three. It says, You three, the three of you, come out unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And Yahweh came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. So Yahweh is now going to deal with Miriam and with Aaron. I want you to follow the story. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak to him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house, mine house, with whom I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. The most I saying when I deal with Moses, I don't do it with similitudes and dark sayings and, um, you know, all these, by the way, conversations. I talk to him mouth to mouth, meaning I talk to him plainly and straight. It says, and the similitude of, of your hour shall ye behold. It says, wherefore, then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Verse 9 says, And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against them, and he departed. You must always know there's trouble. If somebody just says something and they leave, there's trouble. Verse 10 says, And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So Miriam changed color. She lost all her pigment, pigments and she became white as snow. So leprosy is nothing to do with boils and diseases. It's a color change. Verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead 
of whom the flesh is half consumed when he came sorry when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Verse 13 And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O my God, I beseech thee. Listen to the response of the Most High against this woman. The Most High says in verse 14, And Yahweh said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face. I'll let that just marinate for a second. Let me read it again. And Yahweh said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, Should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp, meaning put her out of the camp for seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. This is because Miriam spoke against Moses. But listen to what she said. And they said, meaning her and Aaron, had Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses? Had he not spoken also by us? This is the danger. So please move away from this doctrine. So now, our people always had an issue with keeping the commandments of the Most High. Always. We don't want to listen. Listen to this. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh. We don't want to listen. Don't tell us. We are fine. We want to do our own thing. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Lie to us and give us cool, calm words. Don't come with these harsh words and telling us, listen, the Bible say, do not eat pork. You still want to eat that bacon? The Bible say, don't do it. You want to not keep the Lord's feast days. You don't want to keep the Sabbath. You don't want to keep the new moon, tabernacles. You don't want to keep any of those. You rather want to keep um, Easter and um, Christmas and all those things. You don't want to keep Passover. So you telling the um, prophet, rather lie to us. It's okay, man. Just tell us, even if we do all these things, we'll be fine. All we have to do is believe. We don't have to change anything. Just lie to us. We will accept that. Don't give us the harsh words. So now, the Bible is so simple, but we want to make it something difficult. But this is why. It says, Unto the poor, everything is pure. And unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. If you are not pure according to the Bible, things are not simple for you. Your mind is defiled and you would go with anything that anybody says. Verse 11 says, and this is against the teachers. It says, whose mouths must be stopped who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre sake. Let me make it easy for you. The same verse in the NLT. They must be silenced, because they are turning whole families away from the truth by their false teaching. False teachings. It says here, and they do it only for money. Don't let anybody choose you or make you believe that the Bible says something that it doesn't. You go and study the Bible for yourself. It's very important. So if we look at Matthew 22 verse 29, it says the following. Yahweh I answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of the Most High. If you don't know the scriptures, you're just going to fall for any wind of doctrine. We're going to stand in front of the Most High one day. He's going to have a conversation with you. He's going to ask you a couple of questions. You cannot say, can I please call my pastor because I followed him? 
The Most High is going to say, listen, I'm going to deal with your pastor later. This now is between you and I. Why did you not read the Bible? Did I not say, study to show thyself approved unto God? Weren't you supposed to study? Did the Bible also not teach you that if the blind leave the blind, they both fall into the ditch? So you and your pastor are in trouble. I'll get to him later. But I'm asking you now, why did you not apply your mind? We don't want to listen. We just want to say, my pastor said. So listen to this. This is Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. It says, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they that sorry, they which lead thee cause thee to err, error, same thing, and destroy the way of thy paths. So if women and children are over us, they will lead us to go astray. This is not me. This is what the Bible is saying. The Bible is pretty straightforward. So now we've looked at all the places where we had to interject things into the Bible. Let's go and see what the Bible say clearly in plain English. This is Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and I'll go straight to the point, verse, in, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. That is plain. I don't have to add anything. It says, but I suffer not a woman to teach. Suffer is old English for allow. It says not to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. The woman cannot stand there behind a pulpit and be over man and be the worship team leader and be over man and be the choir conductor and be over man. The woman cannot be over man. She must be silent, says the Bible. For Adam was first formed and not Eve. And Adam was not, in, sorry, was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Pretty clear, straightforward. We don't have to look for things. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. It says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. We as men have to submit under Christ. It's about submission. It says, And the head of the woman is the man. So your husband is over you, woman, whether you like it or not. We are not saying that the man should rule you and uh, mistreat you and punch you. No, we are saying that your husband will love you and because he's going to love you, you are going to submit just as we submit under Christ. It says, and the hair of Christ is the most high. So now, let's go to plain English again. We don't have to read anything into the scriptures. We were talking about prophets. It says here, and the, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Remember? It says, For God is not the author of confusion, but, in, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. If you are a saint and you are in a church, God says, He is not the author of confusion, right? But of peace, as in all the churches, not some churches, not the church in Corinth only, not the church in Paul's time only, not the church in the Bible days only, the church in Eldos, the church in Joburg, the church in USA, Canada, the church in New York, the church in Mexico, the church in wherever, China, India, as in all the churches. He is not the author of confusion. It says here, Let your woman keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. We see this now twice. They have to submit. Right, so Genesis 3 and verse 16 will give us the answer. It says, Unto the woman he saith, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Again, we're not saying your husband can beat you or treat you like a piece of, no, piece of nothing, 
but he will rule over you. You are not supposed to rule over your husband. That's clear. So now, let us read verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Listen, don't add anything here and say, no, the woman can't speak. Paul was just talking to other people. Paul was speaking to all churches. It says here, and why we can't do this is because the men don't know the Bible. So your, your wife cannot come to you with, with questions, biblical questions and ask you. So make sure that you um, get your, the knowledge as the man of the house so that you can teach your family. Verse 36 says, What came the word of the Most High out from you, remember Miriam, or came it unto you only? This is my favorite part. 37 and 38 says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, there is not a pastor that would say I'm not spiritual. So if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. It's not my word, says Paul. These are God's commandments, right? It says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So if you choose to be ignorant, that's your prerogative. You do you. The Lord will deal with us on judgment day. So I think I've covered, I think I've covered everything that I was supposed to cover. I'm sure there's more. But if you don't get it by now, you're not. If you're not going to accept the word of God by now, you're not. Because I've shown you plainly, plain English, Plain scripture, a woman cannot teach. And if we want to go to other scriptures that prove that a woman can, we have to actually insert our own ideas and doctrine into that. So again, thank you if you've made it to the end of this lesson. Thank you for listening. And I hope to see you in the next lesson. And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.